Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, in brief, I'm just going to talk about alpha helix structure. This is a two part video, which in first part, I'm just going to give an overview of alpha helix and some important concepts of alpha helix. While in the second part, I ex actually explain the alpha helix structures in details with animation. So let's look at this first phase of the video. You know, in the last video, if you remember and recall, we talked about the protein structure hierarchy. And I told you about the steps. Starts with the primary structure and then it's converted to secondary. Then secondary is further converted to tertiary and such more tertiary structures linked together to make a quaternary structure. I told you that tertiary and quaternary both structures can provide the actual functionable form of the protein. But secondary structure and primary structures are not enough for a complete functionality of a protein. Now, when you talk about alpha helix, the first thing you should remember is it belongs to the secondary structure of the protein. And actually, there are three types of secondary structures of the protein. One is alpha helix, second one is beta sheet, and the third one is the turn. Okay. And apart from these three types of structures, if there is any other structures worth calling a secondary structure, we put them into random coil. Uh, this is a type of nomenclature there is. Whatever thing we don't understand, it's not belonging to alpha helix or beta sheet, let's put them into the random coil. Now, alpha helix is a properly formed secondary structure. Now, how exactly it is formed and what are its features? If you look at primary structure, it's nothing but a polypeptide chain with simple amino acids linked with each other with the help of peptide bond. That is CONH bond. If you remember, the bond is like this. CONH, we call it the peptide bond. And there are rest of the amino acid sequences in both the sides. Now, this is a linear chain that is the primary structure of the protein. Now, that primary structure of the protein is not at all stable. You need to be converted because, you know, there are different hydrogens and oxygens that are found in nearby uh, amino acid sequences. As they found this, this hydrogen from one nitrogen from the backbone of the amino acid sequence of the polypeptide sequence and the oxygen from a nearby carbonyl carbon in, in some, some distant place, uh, oxygen of some carbon in carbon. Now that hydrogen from the nitrogen of the backbone can form a hydrogen bond with the oxygen of the carboxy, this, this, this group of the CO group here that is present in the backbone and nearby amino acid, the consecutive amino acids, nearby like 3 to 4 amino acids in length, it can pair with it with the help of hydrogen bonding. This hydrogen bonding in between the oxygen and the hydrogen from the backbone of polypeptide chain itself converts the linear structure of amino acids or linear structures of polypeptide into a helix and that helix is right handed the right handed coiling simply if you look at this is the axis my thumb and rest of the rest of the amino acids and polypeptide chain will coil like this this will be the rotation that's the right handed helix rotation that will be formed so whatever secondary structures are there that is namely alpha helix and beta sheet they are formed based on the hydrogen bonding but in alpha helix the hydrogen bonding is formed between the adjacent the nearby amino acid sequences in the same polypeptide chain now normally there are three to four amino acids in gap so the amino acid number one pairs with uh, the amino acid number four or five in the same chain of the polypeptide with the help of hydrogen bond okay and that's how they form this kind of this kind of structure alpha helix and in this kind of structure how ex exactly and why it forms helical because you know as it's the same chain and it's formed after three to four gap of amino acid sequences so let's say this is one amino acid this is another and uh, say similarly these are the amino acid sequences hydrogen bonds are formed in between those and by this fashion the whole structure of helix is held together okay that is the idea of alpha helix structure another important idea about alpha helix i must tell you is that alpha helix structures uh, are good 
to be present in many of the tertiary form as well as quaternary forms and actually alpha helix structures are more found in proteins that are membrane embedded uh, in, in those kind of proteins in the tertiary structures we will find more and more alpha helix structures because if you think uh, it's a membrane embedded protein so in cell membrane we know the cell membrane it's a uh, uh, the idea of cell membrane simply most of the part of the cell membrane is made up with this hydrophobic layers and a little part of the hydrophobic hydrophilic so what happens the majority part of the hydrophobic layer are, are actually so the alpha helix the amino acids of alpha helix that are present there are hydrophobic in nature which in contact with the hydrophobic layer of the cell membrane in many cases of channel proteins this alpha helix also help to form the channel proteins in, in a proper constructed manner where we have the hydrophilic amino acids in both this layer that creates the channel and rest of the surrounding amino acids that we saw uh, that are present here are hydrophobic which is in contact with the lipid so this is the way this alpha helix structures are kind of good for for the membrane attached or membrane anchored proteins and also transmembrane proteins in many cases although alpha helix structures are found extensively in both the types of proteins globular proteins and fibrous proteins okay and in, especially in fibrous proteins you will see the contents in many cases another thing i must uh, say before showing you the animation is that there are different amino acids that are destined to form alpha helices okay it's not actually true for alpha helix it's also true for beta sheets so any other protein secondary structure the idea is not all the amino acids are well alpha helix formers well in this case most of the amino acids are but except for two amino acids one is glycine another one is proline so glycine and proline are not worthy to form an alpha helix because they are known as a alpha helix breakers why because glycine doesn't even have any side chain the r group you know it's only h so it lacks a part of the side chain and as a result uh, the 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 rotation around the bond are very so much unconstrained there in in glycine so in that case uh, it fails to form a proper alpha helix structures if glycine content is high or in some case of proline if you look because a proline does not contain the nh from the from any of its side chain as a result of that uh, it fails to form alpha helix so in both these cases glycine and proline fails to form alpha helix structures apart from them rest of the amino acids can properly form alpha helix structures so once we know all this uh, little details about the alpha helix let's now look at exactly the the physical structure of alpha helix and how exactly it's formed okay friends let's talk about alpha helix alpha helix is a type of protein secondary structure we know the proteins are formed by joining amino acids together with the help of peptide bond and there are different amino acids that are linked with each other with this peptide bond formed and once it's done we call it a polypeptide chain now that polypeptide chain is known as a primary structure of the protein now those polypeptide chain and the amino acids present there they have the r groups of different nature now with the help of those r groups and also they carry coo groups and also nh groups different groups with the help of those different groups they engage in internal interactions of hydrogen bonding and this hydrogen bonding that they involve with uh, ultimately provides structure like a helix and sometimes structures like a sheet we call it alpha helix and beta sheet these structures are known as secondary protein structures which are formed by the combination of primary structures of the proteins or primary amino acid chain now let's look at alpha helix and how exactly this helix is formed if you zoom into the structure you can see that this ball stick models represents amino acids linked with each other with the help of the peptide linkage let's look at it the direction of an alpha helix is indicated by the sequence of atoms within each residue first is the nitrogen colored in blue second is the alpha carbon third is the carbonyl carbon and uh, the carbon carbon is, is in, in black and the and the fourth 
is the colored one and it's, it's coming out from there. Now this helix runs from the bottom to the top. That's what we start with. Okay, let's look at it. The carbonyl oxygen of the first amino acid makes a hydrogen bond to the NH hydrogen of the fifth amino acid. In this alpha helix, each of these first four amino acids through the carbonyl oxygen makes only one hydrogen bond with the alpha helix backbone. So you see, after every four amino acids, there is a hydrogen bond between this NH and NH, NH hydrogen and the carbonyl uh, oxygen there. That's how the hydrogen bonds formed after every four amino acids. It start with one, two, three and four. Fourth one is this one. That's how they start making a spiral structure. This NH hydrogen of the ninth amino acid makes a hydrogen bond with the oxygen of the fifth amino acid. In an alpha helix, each of these last four amino acids through the NH hydrogen makes only one hydrogen bond within the alpha helix throughout. So by this fashion, if you keep on making bonds between, uh, between every four amino acids in gap, like five with nine, one with four, and by this fashion, they make a structure like helix. Now if you look at this helix, the pitch of the helix is the length per one complete turn. That is between this consecutive two turns. And this length in this case is 5.4 angstrom. In an alpha helix, 18 residues will make 5 complete turns. Or about 3.6 residues should be present per single turn that we can easily calculate with. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that because your subscription keeps me going to, to create so many videos for you. Thank you.